will speak to you by his word. Ask him. Open up, tell him, Lord, I open up my heart for your word tonight. He said, that which I know not, teach thou me. And if I've committed iniquity, I will do no more. Lord, speak to me by your word tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. By way of follow-up of what I taught us online on Friday, where we went through some questions. It's important that we review those things, but by way of review, I'm going to give you a message from the Lord tonight that is God needs you to work with him. God the Father, your Father, my Father, needs you to walk not work, to walk with him. You know, he said to Abraham in Genesis 17, walk before me and be thou perfect and I will make my covenant with you and I will multiply you exceedingly. Walk with me. Another translation says, walk before me. Walk with me. And be that perfect. God needs you to walk with him. That's the message. There's no problem with the Lord. He's the Almighty. He can do and undo. He said, I'm the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? And that's why the Lord Jesus Christ says, with God, that means you working with God, all things are possible. It is with God that makes all things possible. You can do it by yourself. You can do it alone. You need to walk with him. God needs you to walk with him. Walk with me. And Enoch walked with God. And it was not. For God took him. But before then, he had this testimony that he pleased God. And then he went further to say, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. That means walking with God is a walk of faith. And faith means daring situations. Faith means doing what he commands even when it is absolutely inconvenient, if I put it that way. Of course, to the man walking in faith, he, does not, he or she does not see any inconvenience. That's the other side of it. He's just doing. He said, these all walked in the faith and not having received the, these all died in the faith, not having received the promises, but saw it afar off and were persuaded and they embraced it and they declared the same. So men of faith, women of faith don't see inconvenience. That's their life. Faith puts you in that realm. Faith puts you in that realm. When you are still seeing lack because there is no money with you physically, uh, no, faith takes you beyond that. Faith don't see lack. Faith sees supplies. Faith is not moved by what it sees physically. Faith knows it already exists. It is done. That's why God needs us to walk with him. When we go contrary to his word, when we go contrary to his ways, when we go contrary to his saints, then we are not walking with him. That means we have turned our back to him. And he said, what will I do when my people turn their backs before their enemies? God is waiting for you to walk with him. Put your faith on the line with him. Stand true to his word with him. 
do what he says to be done with him. The big question is, what are you expecting this year? The second month is almost gone. What are you expecting? What will you that the Lord do for you? But you see, despite that you would that or you desire that, it will not and cannot do it alone. It needs you to walk with him. Hallelujah. He said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected head. I have great thoughts for you, he said. I have great thoughts of peace for you, he said. I want to give you that expected hand, he said. But then, he said, I can't do it alone. I can't do it alone. That's what I want to do, but I can't do it alone. I need you to walk with me. I need you to cooperate with me. I will not go against my word nor violate my constitution, if I put it that way. So he said unto them, then you shall go and you shall pray unto me. You have to. And you shall find me when you search for me with all your heart. That's the condition. So it's true God has great plans for you. It's true you have great expectation for this year which you have put in his hands, but he cannot do it alone. He needs you to be correctly positioned. He needs you to be well in place. He needs you to do the right things with him for him to confirm it for you. Hallelujah. Joseph a prophetic example for the year, saw a great vision too. He saw that great vision of what God would do with him, of what God would do for him, of where God is taking him. He said it with such excitement to the point that his brothers were jealous of him and they sold him to slavery. Even in slavery, God did not just prosper him in slavery because he was Joseph, God prospered him because he was walking with God. He kept the altar of God going. He kept the sacrifices of God going. He kept his walk with God. How can I do this and sin against my God? And God watched him. Watched him walk with him. He was excited where others should be crying, were crying. He was a man of faith. He was in prison and he said, why, why is your countenance sad? What's wrong with you people? They were in prison. Why should their countenance not be sad? But not for a man of faith. Not for a man of faith. So he, he was locked up in that yard, but he never saw himself locked up. Locked up. No way. He was free in God. Free at heart. Just enjoying his life with his God. Then God came. The Bible says until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him and made him ruler of his people. He walked with God. Abraham was sending a servant to go look for a wife for his son Isaac. And in praying he said, the angel of the law before whom I walk, go with you. <laughs> Glory to God. It's time to walk with God. Hallelujah. This year you will celebrate. This year you will not know lack. 
every area of lack in your life shall be so supernatural feel, supernaturally filled. Filled to the overflowing. Hallelujah. It's high time you examined yourself. And ask yourself, am I doing enough? Am I really doing what God demands? Am I really putting to work what God demands? Am I really driving myself into God? This is that moment. Paul writing to Timothy. That is true. Great prophecies have gone ahead of you. What God said he would do with you, he would do for you. But you will war a good warfare in accomplishing the doors. And we understand very carefully and perfectly what he meant. That ceaseless prayers, intercessions, supplications before the Lord. How far have you gone on that journey? It's a fight of faith. You're in the war front. He said, He teaches my fingers to fight. That's what He does. We're in the war front. We're on the fight. The fight of faith. Hallelujah. I'm excited in my spirit. I'm excited in God. Because I see his load of benefits. I see a great door open for us. I see abundance flowing in. I see the hand of God manifesting itself amongst us. But it's time we walk with God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I'll make my covenant with you and I will multiply you exceedingly. Oh, come, let us walk with him. How is your walk with God? And it begins with your prayer life goes to your study life. We've talked a lot about this. goes to your study life. Then it goes to your commitment life. Doing his will. And in case I'm, I'm about to say what my focus on Sunday will be and that may make some of you not come to church on Sunday because it's going to be pretty much on the subject of tithing. That's what the Lord told me to come and emphasize. And a lot of people don't get it. They always think it's about money. And I've told you many times, it's not about money. It's the first thing that must be on the ground in our walk with God. You know, have you read it before? When he said, the most high himself, when he registers the people. Let me quickly pick that one up. Second, sorry. I believe it should be Psalm 89, but I needed to be sure. Between 86 and 89. Just a second, sorry. Oh, sorry, Psalm 87. He said, His foundation is in the holy mountains. The Lord loved the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God. Now watch. He said, I will make mention of Rehab. 
and Babylon to them that know me, behold Philistia and Tyre with Ethiopia. This man was born there. But you will not get it very clearly until we read the following verses. And of Zion it shall be said, this and that man was born in that. That means God notify, notices individuals, this and that. Not that they were born. No, this and that. God deals with us as individuals. Then he said, the highest himself shall establish her. The law shall count. Watch. When he writes up his people, this man, that this man was born there. Another translation say, when he registers the people, he shall count. When he registers the people. That I know this one. I know that one individually. I know him. I know her. Not I know them. So walk with God. As he is registering you, you also must register yourself. I don't want to jump into Sunday service now. Let me continue with this. So there is a call of unlimited commitment to the Almighty in our walk with him. How is your prayer life? How is your giving life? I always say, if you're giving this year is the same as last year, it's not working. Not to talk of even less that, because a part of the just is as a shining light. It shines more and more onto the perfect day. As God is, if you expect God to be taking you higher, you too must commit yourself to be going higher in your sacrifices and your offerings to Him. It's a walk of faith. It's a walk of faith. But your tithe must not be missing because it registers you continually. It's a walk of faith. Put the worship of God in place in your life. Remember Elijah before the fire will call. The first thing he did was to repair the altar of the Lord that was broken. He puts that in place. Then he sets the wood in order. He puts his life spiritually in order according to the standard of the word of God. According to the details, demands of God. He is your father. He's your God. He must take the first place or he's not there. He's the first. That's the only thing he knows. He knows no other number. If he's not the first, he's not there. If he's not the first, he's not there. Are you a true worshiper? Remember what the Lord Jesus said. He said, the Father seeks us to worship him, true worshipers, who worship in spirit and in truth. Say Elijah was a man of like passion. It's like us. And he prayed and held rain for three and a half years. Even for that rain to come back, he had to pray again. One man. When there was nothing in the land, God was sending ravens to bring him fresh and um, fresh bread and fresh cake. Amen? It's time you ex experience the hand of the Lord in your life where it demands a walk with him. Hallelujah. It demands a walk with him. Zechariah 8 verse 9 says, let your hands be strong. Ye that hear the words of the Lord these days by the mouth of the prophet. Let your hands be strong. 
that the foundation of the Lord, let me read it directly. Don't fear the Lord of hosts. Let your hands be strong. You who have been hearing in these days these words by the mouth of the prophets, who spoke in the day of the the day the foundation of the the foundation was laid for the house of the Lord of hosts, that my people might be that my temple might be built. That means let your hand be strong in building this temple. <laughs> Let your hand be strong in building his house. Let your hand be strong in building his house. Hallelujah. Let your hand be strong. Get committed to the building of his house. Hallelujah. In the doing of it, be committed. I said to people, how can you be coming to a church for a whole year? You never brought one person. Is that not a shame? We should not even be saying a whole year. You say it's a shame if you can't bring one person in a month. 30 days, you can't bring one person. But that's the life we are living. That's the life we are living. Let your hands be strong. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Waking up early in the morning saying, Lord, here I am again. What will I do for my king? <laughs> and everywhere you go, you are telling them about your king. And say, please come with me to church on Sunday. I'm going to change your life. Or is it the morning devotion? It's going to change your life. And you get to church and there is a need somewhere and you is within the power of your hand. You are not telling pastor to tell everybody. You just go, you get it done. It's in your hands. And that's why his own hand will be working for you. You just wake up Sunday morning. You are putting your package, a special offering. You say, oh, pastor, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't mean to embarrass you, but this is just a special offering for the church today. I said, we are not raising any special offering. I don't need any special offering to be raised. It's just from my heart to my father. That's how we walk with him. That's how we provoke things. When it's genuine, it's genuinely done from your heart. I remember some years back, a lady got a new job. Or maybe her first job, I don't know. I was in Nigeria then, and she came to me, and she put an envelope in my hand, says, sir, Daddy, this is my first salary. I want to put it in your hand. I said, for what? If you give me your salary, what are you going to eat for the month? He says, sir, please, don't deny me my blessing. Yeah. Of course, I took it, but I did something. <laughs> because I just couldn't contain. You just bring everything. Uh, I put it, I said, okay, after I collected, I received it and blessed her. And I said, now, are you my daughter? She said, yes. Am I truly your spiritual father? She said, yes. Okay, as your father, I am giving you a gift. So I, I gave it back to her, but she brought it complete. And that same month, I think, an opening open up for her in Canada. She's still there at it today. I'm not sure she was doing that for Canada to open up for her. That's the truth. I gave it back to her as a gift from me to her. Just not because she, was, she wasn't expected that I would give it back to her. She provoked heaven. Faith is a fight. I've told you the story of someone who medically would not be able to give that. It's confirmed. But then those days in Lagos winners, we used to have tight booklets. It's like uh, those ones you write how much you give, you put it in an envelope and you drop it. You know, all these transfer, Zelle, and all these things we do these days are not available. And this lady went to take a tight booklet for a child that medically they said to her, she would not have. She could not and gave it a name. 
I was very tight on it. We have the child came so fast to the amazement of the medical community. Amen. Walk with God by faith. Fight. Don't just be waiting for things to happen. Even science, physics tells us that everything assumes a state of rest until an eternal force is applied. Fight. He said, God has shown us the light. Bind the sacrifice we cause to the honor of the altar. That's the way. Fight. You are consuming what will expand your destiny. Open up to God. I don't know why I even came this, this way now. Every time you hear some people that they want to take your money, nobody wants your money. It's your money that wants to make a way for you. My bishop said, when you give, you are not giving away. That's the mistake, so it's the mind of people. No, you are giving to make a way for yourself. Oh, that's the way it is. Walk with God. That's the message that brought us tonight. I'll reemphasize on some of these things on Sunday. And I want to believe somebody will be in this church because of you this Sunday. Faith is a fight. Faith is a fight. It's time to demonstrate your zeal for your God. Demonstrate your zeal in doing the unusual, in provoking heaven. You have to provoke him. You have to provoke him in doing the unusual. You have to provoke him. Provoke him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Without seed in the heart, the ground cannot produce. So always keep putting seeds in the hand of the Almighty. Don't wait for all these regular sessions we do. Drive yourself with your seeds. Say, so cast your bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. What you sowed, Previously, is what you are eating today. That's what you don't know. If you are not eating as much as you should be eating today, it's because you did not sow as you should have sown before. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if you want to see abundance, if you want to meet with abundance in your future, keep sowing the seeds that will generate abundance today. That's how it goes. That's how this can, that's how even life goes. The food we the, the food we plant today is the one we eat tomorrow. That's what the farmers do. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want to do something right now. And I say, may the Lord of heaven. May the Lord of heaven himself command his blessing upon your seed in this house thus far in the name of Jesus. That's what he said. He said, for your seed shall be prosperous. The vine shall give his fruits. The ground shall yield his increase. And the heavens shall give their due. And I will cause the remnant of these people to inherit all these things. But it begins with your seed. It begins with your seed. Glory to God. Oh, Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you for the sacrifices of your people in this house. Thank you, Lord, for the seed of your people in this house. From my heart, I bless those seeds again. And I command 
let their seed be prosperous. Let their ground give an increase. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I will not forget. I don't know why I jumped to this. Maybe it's just for some of us here. I was in a church in Chicago. And uh, after I finished ministering to them, a little boy came and put a seed in my hand, just $5. It touched me so much. It touched me so much. Because it's not a matter of volume. It's value. This young boy. So I took it and I blessed him. And he went to school. In fact, immediately I did that, he met his dad. The dad was the pastor of the church. And he told the dad, he said, dad, something great is going to happen to me. Because pastor blessed me. <laughs> and the following week, they called the dad to school. And they said, we just decided this week we are going to give your son double promotion. <laughs> and he turned to his dad, he said, I told you, I gave pastor offering, I know God will do something for me. He's in college now, above his colleagues. We provoke God. A lot of us, we don't know uh, Pastor Ennis will be surprised at what I'm preaching because he said, I sh I'm not talking enough on this subject of giving to the people. That's why I give it to him. You know, he's the one I preach. Because I don't need motivation to give. It's my life. I understand. A lot of people still do because we don't understand it. But that's your life. <laughs> that's your life. You keep provoking. And I've read uh, Ephesians 4.28 for us. He said, let him walk that he may have to give. You think is what you are handing that God expects to sustain you. No, it's God's job to sustain you. And he tells you what to do. You keep giving, see what I will do. Amen. I think I'm preaching good message because I can see my elder acknowledging it. When an elder is acknowledging your message, it must be good. <laughs> Glory to God. Lord, we give you praise. Father, I say again, bless the seed of your people in this house. Prosper the seed of your people in this house in amazing ways. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, walk with me and I will take you to places you can only dream of, he says. <laughs> Glory to God. Go out to fill his house. He will fill your life. He said that to us before. As walk, don't let your life be open. Find something you are always doing with him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless your name. We glorify you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. May the strength to walk with him be given to you. May the hand of the Almighty himself strengthen your walk with him. In the name of Jesus. Prove God. By doing something unusual for him. And he will do the unusual for you too. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In Jesus name. Now let's give the Lord our offering for the day before we close. Those of you online, you know what to do. Fizel, just use our email address, kcai denver at gmail.com or cash app or whatever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless you, Lord. Let's just quickly do that. Or oh, Zell, you can use my number. It will go straight to the church account. I pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, blessed be your name. We cast our seed before you, Lord of heaven. We cast our offering before you tonight. Lord, receive it. And in receiving it, Lord, breathe the breath of life upon everyone. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. 
in Jesus name. Glory to God. We bless you Lord. Father, it is in the name of Jesus that we commit every one of our children in this church into your hand. Breathe your breath of health into every one of them. Breathe your breath of health into them. Heal them of their afflictions. Strengthen them of their weaknesses. Impact them with supernatural strength from above. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. We thank God for the service tonight. What a great time in God's presence. We keep celebrating his presence. We keep celebrating our being in his presence. Oh, thank you, Lord. Sunday, 10.30, whether you're online or here physically, I've said it. If you're in Denver, there is no point being online. Is that not so? You'll be here physically and come with somebody. Invite somebody to come with you and God will honor you. Jesus is Lord. Let's share the goodness together this morning. I mean, this evening, surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. God bless you. Jesus is Lord.